separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, oh God. It's as powerful it is as it was during the 2,000 years ago, Lord. It's as powerful today. One drop. One drop of your blood, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Right. So, I've got... The Lord has been uh, dealing with me with this word. Um, I think <laughs> what I'm going <laughs> don't worry. So it's my own wife, so <laughs> I understand. I know her very well then. <laughs> so the Lord has been speaking to me about this and uh, this particular word today. I'm just going to share it and I hope it will, God will do a work in all of us because of where he's taking us, brothers and sisters. There is something in, in, in the spirit and uh, I know God is up to something. Amen? So, don't be discouraged. Don't be downcast. As David will speak to his spirit, he would speak to his soul with him. Amen? Um, about, I think, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, First Lady brought a message after the fasting, or within, some, I think we were still uh, fasting when he, she brought the word. And um, we were talking about it. And um, I've, been, I've been seeking God. And I just believe that this word is for us as a church. It's almost like a continuation of what she shared. I felt that the Lord says, you know, saying to us that we only fast when we need things. We only come to him and fast when we need things from him. But that's not what fasting is for. Brothers and sisters, fasting is the greatest weapon that God has given to his people in the kingdom. And so, as we heard, the first lady shared, if the son of God fasted, if the God incarnate, the express image of God fasted, then who are, who are we to say we will not fast? And so... It really, it really challenged, you know, it challenged me. I live a fasted life. <laughs> I live a fasted life. And I will encourage you to do that. Don't wait until there is a problem. Then you start fasting. Don't wait until the children go astray before you start fasting. Lord, bring them home. Don't wait until your marriage is finished. Before you start fasting, no. Fasting must be our lifestyle. Amen? And I'm not saying, you know, fast every day. If you can, why not? <laughs> but what I'm saying, when I say live a fasted life, we have 52 a weeks in the year. Every week, you can spread it out and fast. Even if it's a day, one day. A week, twice a week, three times a week. You can do so. So throughout the whole year, you will see that by the time the year comes to an end, trust me, it's not just going to be for things, but it's for also your spiritual growth. Amen? Amen? So, um, I'm going to talk about... Activating the power of the Holy Spirit. Activating the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the title of the message. Brothers and sisters, we all have the Holy Spirit. If you have, rec if you have received Christ, if you are born again, then you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Because salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so you have the Holy Spirit in you. But there are certain things that God has given to us to do, our consecration to him. 
And fasting is one of them. Amen? Sacrifice is one of them. Our service is one of them. To him is one of them. Oh, there's so many things. But when it comes to sac this uh, consecration, brothers and sisters, we, we tend to uh, relax about these things. And we wait until maybe the church declares something. Let's all fast. Let's all pray. Let's, uh, and then we start doing it. But when you look at the other side, those on the other side, a very strict, I'm talking about the old courts. They don't mess about. When they are given something to do, they make sure they do it. If they have to wake up every morning, 2 a.m., and go to the sea and bath, if they have to travel to Brighton, they will go there, 2 a.m., and do it. If they have to go and sleep in the cemetery, they go and lie there, all because they want power. Sometimes they do these things because they want to destroy life. But when it comes to us, we struggle. And the reason why, I'm not saying we don't, we don't have to go through problems and all that because Jesus said so. But he said, be of good cheer because I have overcome. Amen? Amen. But the reason why I think we go through the things we go through unnecessarily is because sometimes we, 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 we kind of, you know, relax when it comes to God. We can say, well, God understands. We always say that, isn't it? But these guys don't play games with that. And so, for instance, there could be, let's say, a prayer meeting on Thursday, and there may be snow. Said, oh, I'm not going because it's, it has snowed. But we go to work. Yeah? But those on the other side, they won't say it has snowed, so they're not going to Brighton to bath in the beach. They will do it. And in the, in the spirit realm, the higher bidder always will, will win. And that is why things happen to us. But I'm here to tell you that you have power that has been given to you that is on, on the inside of you that you don't even have a clue it has not been tapped it has not been used today i will open your eyes a bit so that you will know i want us to go to the book of um, matthew this is the son of god book of matthew chapter chapter 4 verse 1 when he before he started his ministry, brothers and sisters, he had come, he was born, he was going to the temple, the, uh, the synagogue, reasoning with the teachers of the law, the scribes. He started going there for, from 12 years old. He was doing all this. Now he was, he was, he was 30 years. And he was about to start his ministry. And before that, as Sister uh, um, First Lady put it right, before that, he got baptized by John the Baptist. And in the midst of baptism, the Bible said the Holy Spirit descended in the bodily form of a dove. And God spoke. That is when God affirmed him as his beloved son. And that is when the Holy Spirit came upon him. Brothers and sisters, he had, Jesus had the spirit without measure. If you read first, uh, if you read John 1, I'm going to read it. He was the creator. He was God. He was the word. He was life. He was light. What else did he need? Why did he have to go through all this pain? To fast. To starve himself. Why did he have to, do, have to do that? He was, the, he was God himself. As I said, the God incarnate. The express image of God. But he went to the wilderness. This is where, let's go to Matthew 4, 1. It says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness. To be tempted by the devil. 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. So now we know that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Brothers and sisters, when he came, the Bible, uh, let's go to the book of John. Let me show you something. The book of John chapter 1. The book of John chapter 1 verse 1. It said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Did you hear that? So these were his, his credentials. But there was something wrong. In Matthew, the book we just read, the chapter 4, what we've just read. When he fasted, brothers and sisters, before that took place, Isaiah had a, a vision or a, a, a spoke prophetically and talked about the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. This is where in the region where Jesus was. The Bible said they were in darkness. They, were, they, were, they sat in darkness and have seen great light. Upon those who sat in, in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Jesus was walking in the shores of Galilee. These places were in darkness. If he was the light, why was this place was still in darkness? Because remember his credentials. He was the light. He was light. He was God. But this place was in darkness. Isaiah saw it before he was even born. But brothers and sisters, the moment Jesus fasted and received the Holy Spirit, when he came, the Bible said, I want you to read it. So Matthew 4 from verse 13. Matthew 4, 13. And, having, and, ha and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Brothers and sisters, light wouldn't have dawned until Jesus fasted. Because remember, he was walking that time in the shores of Galilee. And this place were in darkness. But the moment he fasted and received the power, can you see? Now light has dawned. And then from verse 17, the Bible says, From that time, Jesus began to preach to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So things don't just happen. Amen? The Bible said he went to the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit. But there was no power. So Jesus was in the flesh. This is the, the God incarnate. But the moment he fasted, even though the spirit of God was upon him and was in him, but something was triggered. Something was activated within him. And that is the power I'm talking about. And the moment he came out, brothers and sisters, he was a different person. If you read the book of Luke 4, chapter 4, from verse, I think, um, 14. He said, now he returned in the power of the Spirit. So you can have the Spirit without power. Amen? The power is stuck inside of you. There is something you have to do to be able to bring the power out. Amen? So, so for instance, I can have a phone, a brand new phone. Yeah, a handset. As Pastor Ian will be. 
showing his phones here. <laughs> if he was here, yeah. I can have a brand new handset. You know when you receive a brand new phone? It's a brand new handset. You have the box. You have your number. You have the line, everything. You can have that handset, but you cannot make a call or receive calls until that phone is activated. Is that right? Right. Everything that makes the phone to work, you know, all the mechanisms are there, but you can't make a call. Until somebody, your prov provider, somebody from that office calls you and tells you to wait, they will go to what they call comms room and do something. That's something. They will come back and call you and say, now, turn your phone off and turn it back on. That is called activation. When that is done in their office, you'll be able to make calls and you'll be able to receive calls. Until that is done, you cannot make calls, you cannot receive call. So we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come in his full uh, 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 measure, right? His, uh, he, he came with his presence. He came with his power. He came with everything. But that will never be, uh, work within you until it is activated. How do you activate it? Some of the things that God has given us to activate the power within us is fasting and prayer. Fasting is not, fasting doesn't bring power. Let's get it right. Fasting, I think we say that a lot. Fasting doesn't bring power. Fasting activates the power within you. Fasting, it is the Holy Spirit that brought the power when you refers, first of all received him. And so that is why we say the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? But until you activate it through fasting and prayer, you will not see the power within you. Amen? That is why Jesus himself had to go through that. He was God himself. Why does he have to fast? For 40 days and 40 nights. And the moment he fasted, the Bible says he came out from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. Before he went to the wilderness, there was no power. But the moment he came out from the wilderness, there was such power. Now, Matthew 4, 23. Listen to what he did. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went through all went out all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralyt paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Can you see what is going on here? He was going in the uh, synagogue, the synagogue temple at that time. But he could not heal the sick. He could not do the work we have just, he could not cast out demons. But the moment the power within him was activated, now he went forth. And the Bible said he healed the sick, he taught, he preached, and he cast out demons. Brothers and sisters, without we activating the power within us. Sometimes we come and we want the power. We think the power is going to rain down from heaven. No. If you, receive, if you have received the Holy Spirit, then he came in his full measure. Amen? He doesn't come and leave his presence out. He doesn't come and leave his power out. That means when you need him, then you, he comes with the power. No. He came and he came with full measure. Amen? Even though we don't have the Holy Spirit with the full measure, Jesus had. Amen? And so, for us to be effective in a community that where God has placed us, in our territories, we need to awaken. Hallelujah. We need to awaken the power within. And the old, the, some of the things that can awaken and activate the power within us is prayer and fasting. 
So when we are praying and fasting, we are not just asking for things. There are so much God has for you and I to do. Our territories, brothers and sisters, are in darkness. We can come here and even we have to be careful and preach accurate and intelligent messages. But if our territories are still in darkness, then there's something wrong. So, this is what happened to the Son of God himself. And the Bible says he went out. And when he came down, the very place he had been going from when he was 12 years, now demons saw him and said, why have you come here to torment us? All this time, when he was going to the temple, why didn't demons notice him? But now, you see, something has changed. Something has shifted. And the moment they saw him, they said, why have you come here to torment us? We know you. You are the son of the living God. Why didn't they spot him that time? Because there was no power. Brothers and sisters, all of us need power. It is not for the apostles. It is not only for the, the prophets or the fivefold ministry. In apostolic church, everyone carries power. So when you can, you can come to church and the pastors will tell you, okay, you are looking for a baby. See the ashes. Yeah? Everybody must carry power where we are going. It's not only the leaders. It's not only the pastors and the, and the apostles. Because it, that's why when Paul was teaching, he said, until... We all come into the unity of the faith. Amen? Until we all, even though we have been given authority and power to equip you, but until we all come. And so don't ever think that, oh, I can't do it. Uh, I need to call my pastor to come and do it. No. Where we are going, apostolic church, everybody carries power. Amen? Well, that's where we are going. There's no, no longer one man who stand in a pulpit and everything you need, you have to come to that person. No. I'm looking for, I'm seeking deliverance. Okay, hold on. Uh, Pastor Philip is gone to Ghana. He's not here. And so we will wait for two, three months before. No, that is not apostolic church. It's not everything is not on one person. All of us carry the power. That's why when Jesus, you know, Jesus, before he left, he said, these signs shall follow those who believe. Those who believe. If only you are a believer, these signs must follow you. He said, in my name, they will what? Cast out demons. So when you have a demonic issue in your home, you don't need your pastors. This is what you need to understand. You need to activate the power within there is such a power, an untapped and an unused uh, uh, power within you that you need to activate it. And some of the things you, 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 you do to activate this power is fasting and prayer. Amen? When the apostles came, they were casting out demons. Jesus gave them power. When you read Matthew 10, that's what it was. Jesus gave them power. I always say that. Jesus borrowed them his power. So what was on Jesus, he commanded them. And he said, in my name, cast out demons, heal the sick. And they went out and they saw the manifestation of the power that Jesus gave them. And they came back and he said, even demons were subjects to us. Remember Luke 10. He said, even demons were subject to us. So that was Jesus' power that he gave them. But you cannot receive the power until you, have, you, have, you are born again, brothers and sisters. Because as I said, salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit. So it comes with the package. But these guys, when they, they, when they, when the Bible said when Jesus went to the mountain and he came, remember the man brought his son and they couldn't cast out that demon. So they were surprised. 
And Jesus said, there are kinds. There are different kinds. This one, you need prayer and fasting. Amen? And then when Jesus was leaving, he said, I'm not leaving you as orphans. Because remember, the one that carries the power was leaving. And so they were like, we are finished. But Jesus said, listen, you have worked with me for three and a half years. I have taught you all the things you need to know. But don't go out without discipleship notes. Without Bible school notes. You need the knowledge. You have received the knowledge. But I'm telling you, for you to be effective out there, you need the power. This is what we make mistake. We think when we finish Bible school, we are, we are done. We can do no. Brothers and sisters, you need to carry the power. Don't just go out with notes and knowledge. If that was so, Jesus would have commissioned the disciples. But he said, no, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. God, from time immemorial, God never sent any man, any woman without power. That's why Jesus told them. And brothers and sisters, they went to Jerusalem and did. And when Jesus, before Jesus ascended to the Father, remember, they're still not born again. They are still under the old covenant. Amen? So Jesus, the Bible says, when Jesus resurrected from the dead... He went to where they were gathered. gathered. And when they saw him, remember they didn't believe it was him. Uncle Thomas was doubting. And he said, come and touch. <laughs> come and touch. This is it. The wounds and the scar. But brothers and sisters, before he, he ascended to the father, you remember he told them, wait and I will go and send, ask the Father to, to send the Spirit. The, the Father gave the Spirit, but it was Jesus that sent the Spirit. Amen? Because God had already promised them. And so when Jesus came, before he ascended on high to the Father, he said, the Bible said, if you read John 20, 22, he said, Jesus breathed upon them and said, received Receive the Holy Spirit. That was what? Well, that was regeneration. They were coming out of the old covenant into the new covenant. That's when they were born again. That's, a, that's why I say when you receive the Holy Spirit, he comes and lives in you with his power, with his presence, with his wisdom, with his revelation. So revelation, that when you read the Bible and say, oh, I've got revelation, it is not a new knowledge of God. It has always been in your spirit, but it has not manifested in your yeah. intelligence or in your intellect or your uh, natural understanding. So that's why when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, he's bringing it to, into your natural understanding. It has always been in your spirit. But when things are in your spirit, you, the mind cannot fathom it. That's why when you have a dream, you can have a dream, right? When you sleep, sometimes God will be trying to get your attention, but we are so busy. There's all kinds of gadgets and headphones and God said, I'm trying to get your attention. If he can't get your attention, what he does is, when you are asleep, asleep, he comes. Because when you sleep, everything around you sleeps except your spirit. Your human spirit doesn't sleep. So he comes and downloads stuff into your human spirit. Now when you wake up, it has to, the natural mind has to process it. But it's still in your spirit. How do you do that? That's why sometimes you get up and say, oh, I had a you know, serious download from God. But I can't remember. It's not that you not, can't remember. It's still in your spirit, man. It has to come to your natural understanding or your intellect, your mind to be able to process it. So that's how it works. And so God, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's when they were born again. It didn't end there. People thought, oh, they received different spirit. Different. You cannot receive anointing more than one. The anointing is only one anointing that God puts on us. 
But there are different gifts. And it's the same spirit that gives the, 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 the gifts. That's why I say diversity of gifts. But it's the same spirit. So you cannot have through one anointing, two anointing, three anointing, going from conference to conference, receiving anointing. The anointing is one, but different gifts. So the gifts of hospitality, the gifts of administration, the gifts of all these gifts is the one spirit that gives. Amen. So when they receive, they, when they were born again, now they came out of the old covenant and now they are in the new covenant. Amen? So, the day of Pentecost is when they received the power. The Holy Spirit came again and they received, the Bible said, the Bible said, you shall receive power when the Spirit has come upon you. Amen? And that is when, but when they received the power, as the first lady made it clear, they didn't just stay home and say, we have received the Holy Spirit and power. And so, the Bible said they will still continue with the apostles' doctrine. So if you want to activate the power within, it's not even only prayer and fasting. It's the word. Studying the word. Amen? So that's what they were doing. They were doing all that and they were praying. And the Bible said they, be, they became invincible. They were fearless. These were the same people who were afraid of the authorities. When Jesus died, they ran. They were hiding. But the moment they received the power, brothers and sisters, they continued to work, activating. As they were studying the word, as they were, they were praying, as they were breaking bread together, all the service that was going on, brothers and sisters, that's when you activate the power. Amen? We think God is going to rain down the power. No. The Bible says, out of your belly will flow the rivers of the living waters. So the flood will flow out of you. You become a conduit. You become a, a vessel. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, it is your responsibility to keep on doing, as I said, service also activates it. Because if you are doing nothing, then God cannot add anything. So that's why the, the, the apostles, they keep on giving out. They keep on giving out. And one time they were threatened. And the Bible said they came back and met with their companion. And the Bible said where they were praying, the place shook. And they received boldness. Did they not have boldness before? But they received boldness afresh. That's what it means. They didn't receive the Holy Spirit again. They received boldness afresh because they've been given. They've been given. So the more you are given, the, the more God refreshes it. Amen? He's, he, he said his, 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 his mercies are new every morning. So he keep on refreshing it. That's what they were doing. He did, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit twice, three times, no. Amen? So, let's, um, I have um, the scripture. Okay, let's go to John. The book of John, chapter 7. Verse 37 and 8. So you see, this is what Jesus was talking about. He said, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone test, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of the living waters. But he, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. But the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he was talking about the Holy Spirit when he was talking about out of your belly will flow. Rivers, not river, rivers. So now you have received a cup of water. But now the cup of water, because you've been activating, because you have, you have been in the service of God or in the kingdom. 
and all these things you are doing, brothers and sisters, something is happening within. And now the cup of water has become a river. And now you can give. It flows out of you. You don't need anybody to lay hands on you. That doesn't mean nobody can pray for you. I mean, what sometimes we do is that we rely on men. Whereas the power is within you. Just as it's within me. But I have this consciousness wherever I go. Then some people will tell me, oh, why are you so bold? Because I know what is inside of me. And I keep activating it. I keep activating it. I remember one time a lady called me to come and pray for her mom. When I got there, there were so many people. Like Cornelius' house. I remember how Pastor Ian would describe it. Because he has been to Israel. And he says it's a massive living room. And oh, everybody has come to listen to Peter. When I got there, the whole family, the children even <laughs> went to school. They were all still wearing their school uniform. The uncles, the aunties, everybody had come. So when I, I saw the way they were waiting, Pastor Danny, by all way. So I said, hmm, these people, <laughs> they, they, they put they putting me in trouble now. So before I pray, I said, let me tell you, I have nothing to give you. But I know the one who has the power. And he has invested it in me. And so, let me clarify this. Don't look at me like I'm your God. I am not God. But look to him. Everything we are going to do here, I want you to look to him, not me. I am just a vessel. I'm just an instrument. So, don't look at me like your God. So, I clarified, you know, clarified that. And then, I said, now let's deal with the issue. So, we pray. Then I felt the Holy Spirit say, anoint the place. And as I was anointing the place, you see, that is the power within us that we all need to activate, brothers and sisters. Don't th there is such a well within that we need to unblock it. Amen? As I was anointing the place, I smelled the spirit of death in the house. So I said, hmm. I went to one room and I said, hmm. There's a spirit of death hovering in this place. Then they called their mom and they said, so they told their mom and the mom said, oh, yeah. She said, oh, when I moved into this house, I went to the corner shop nearby. And as I was speaking to the guy, the storekeeper there, he said, oh, what, where do you live? And he said, I live in number whatever. And then he said, oh, you live in the, 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 the house that the the, the the lady died in. So she said, she said well, who? She said, oh, the, the owner, who, the person who owned the house died. And she was there for a couple of days. So I said, uh-huh. I said, that spirit is still hovering here. And so the Holy Spirit said, rebuke it and cast it out. And when I did that, now as I was speaking, all eyes was like, how did he know? Yeah, so now they were. You see, that's why we need the gift of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. Because even if they won't listen to you, they will listen. In the moment you bring a word of knowledge, their eyes were like, now they want to hear more. Because how did you know somebody died here? Then, as I prayed, their uncle, you know, Rastafarian, he, he was there. And he was observing everything that was going. He was quiet. And then he came and pulled me. You know, aside in a good day, mostly <laughs> to ask me and said, Oh, Pastor, I have my daughter. He said, For the past whatever, you know, a year or so, he has not been, she has not been eating. And what we call, you know, eating disorder and anorexia, yeah? Anorexia. So can you pray for her? And when I saw, when I saw the, the girl, she was like, you know, she, there was no, it was like bones. She was, the devil was killing her. And we give it a long names and, and, and t uh, what do you call it? Um, a, a long terminology with the uh, medical science stuff. And I said, no. I said, that's a demon oppressing her, demon of oppression. And I became very angry in the spirit when I saw the girl. Because she was dying. 
young girl. She wasn't eating. So I think I went with Brother Paul. And I became angry and I say in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit. Take your hands off her and let her go now. She does not belong to you. Lose her now. I was so angry in the spirit. Instantly, the father came to me later and said, you wouldn't believe it. Somebody who doesn't eat. If they cook rice, he had gone for three plates already, three rounds. <laughs> she has never eaten. But the moment we rebuke the spirit behind it, instantly, she started eating. Somebody who has never eaten, how can you eat three bowls of uh, rice? That is, brothers and sisters, this is what the enemy is doing to our family. This is what the enemy is doing to our children. Now the enemy has targeted our children. And they are using all kinds of things. You heard what was going on, what is going on in America right now. The survey shows that 30% of our children are for LGBTQ. LGBTQ has succeeded recruiting a generation, Gen Z, yeah, Gen Z. That's a generation, a whole generation, next generation that the enemy has captured. So when we come to church, brothers and sisters, it's not one man show. This is what really troubles me. Now we come here to be imparted so that we will go out there and impart others to you. Amen? It's not where we are going. It's not just one man show. Everybody must carry power. That is apostolic church. Everybody must carry power. You don't rely on one man. And brothers and sisters, what they are doing, there's so much going on. And it's coming here too. Well, they, they want to muzzle our mouth that we can't even preach the gospel. The enemy's strategy is to, to silence the church. But they are joking. They are joking and they are playing with fire. To silence. That is why we need to activate the power within. To be able to be, uh, be effective. Because brothers and sisters, if we don't carry the power, our messages will, will not move anything. It will not shift anything. It will not change anything. When we speak, Paul said, I did, when I came to you, I did not want to know anything about you. Apart, except Christ and him crucified. And he said, I did not come to you with enticing words of human wisdom. If we try that, we will fail. We need to carry the raw power to our generation, our dying generation. Because the enemy has targeted them. Today, you think, oh, it is only Africa that witchcraft is, you know, we have witchcraft. No, it's, it's even if it's dangerous in this country. You can read a book and a spell can be cast on you. All this Harry Potter that we are seeing, you think is You can watch a movie and a spell can be cast on you. It's a strategy of the enemy and these are the things they don't want us to, to say. And so many ministers are afraid to preach the gospel. With power, because they are also afraid. But they, they are joking. Some of us, we are ready for them. Because, you know why? You know why? If we, brothers and sisters, if we keep quiet, we have made the cross, what Jesus did on the cross, in vain. When the apostles were, were, were stood, they brought them before the, the Sahendrin. And he said, we're not going to listen to you more than our God. What do you think it was? They had received something. It wasn't just a, a human wisdom. They had received something. That's what I'm trying to demonstrate that to you today. Amen? We need to demonstrate the power of God wherever we go. Brothers and sisters, the Bible, you know, when you read, when I read Jeremiah 31, it said, there is a cry 
I heard a cry in Rama. Rachel is weeping, refusing to be comforted. Comforted. Why? Because her children are no more. They have come and taken, the, the enemy has come in and destroyed the children. And this is where it's happening. If LGBT can recruit 30% of a generation, then the church, we are sleepy. The church in America is sleepy. We have a lot to do. So when we come to church, it's not church as usual. You come here, receive impartation, and go back to your territory. Wherever the Bible says, he said, I think it's Revelation 13. It says that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our, of our, of our Lord and his Christ. And he shall reign forever. Who will do that? It's you and I. We have to command the kingdoms of this world to bow to the kingdom that is above every other kingdom. Amen? That means we will have to listen. We have to receive the dictates and the biddings of heaven and command, superimpose the dictate of heaven over the kingdoms of this world. The Bible tells us to go into what? And do what? Make disciples. Where is your world? Where is your world? Japan is not your world. China is not your world. Jamaica is not your world. <laughs> when I say Jamaica, the Jamaicans are laughing. <laughs> Jamaica is not your world. The, your sphere of influence, that is your world. So if you are working in the bank, that's your world. If you are in a university, that's your world. If you are in a college, that's your world. If you are working in a supermarket, that's your world. And you need to bring the government of God in that place. If the government of God is not established, then you don't know why God sent you there. It has to be established and it has to be institutionalized. Wherever God has put you. If you are on the social media, that is your world. Don't sit down there and just be, 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 get involved in unnecessary debates. The enemy will distract you. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. He said, avoid foolish and, and, and ignorant disputes. Knowing that they create or they, gen, gen, they generate strife. Amen? He said, he said reject profane and, and old wives fables. Amen. And rather exercise yourself towards godliness. Brothers and sisters, we need something in our, in our generation. And that is already in you. So all you need to do is to activate the power within. And wherever you go, you will see the manifestation. He said, God was with them, confirming his word with what? Signs and wonders. You just have to be bold and begin to share the gospel. Do not let anybody muzzle your mouth. Amen? Wherever God has placed you, that's your world. We come here week after week and we come to receive. No more. Now you are pregnant. You have received so much that you are pregnant. You have to give birth. Amen? Those territories where God has positioned you, that is your domain. And God wants you to take over. We wait for the world to take over. Look at what they've done to the movie scene, the movie industry. Now they have turned the movie industry into a ground of seduction, sexual perversion. When your children are work, uh, watching Netflix, you need to be careful. All kinds of things. So you think they are watching cartoons, but there are spirits behind all this. And these are the things they don't want us to share. I don't care whether you go on YouTube. They need to hear that. We're not going to keep quiet. Amen? Because Christ is coming soon. And there are so many that are dying in their sin. And we will not sit down for the cross to be in vain. Because the cross, the Bible, uh, uh, Paul put it this way. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is 
the power of God unto salvation. They need the gospel, brothers and sisters, not our stories. They need the gospel because when we preach the gospel, it brings power. Amen? Is that time? I can't. My goodness. I didn't see that. Anyway, less than, less than. Less than, I need to. Amen. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We, we, God has left a job for us to do here, brothers and sisters. The, spirit, the, the, the songwriter said he left, he left his spirit until what? The work. Can you, can you yeah, that's what the songwriter said. Living his spirit till the work on earth is done. That is why the spirit was left for you and I. The spirit is still here with us. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Wherever you are, the issues that are going on in your family, brothers and sisters, you need to stand because it's a distraction of the enemy. The enemy wants to distract you. So that you will not be able to fulfill your divine purpose. The reason for which God gave you life to be here. So you need to take authority over your household. Take authority over your workplace. Take authority over your territory. Don't say, I need my pastor to come and pray. No. You take authority. As you activate the power within, now begin to put it into practice. You will see the manifestation of everything I'm telling you today. So lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Release the power. Activate the power. Awaken the power within you. In the name of Jesus. Every strategy of the enemy to put fear in you. I bind that spirit right now. And I lose you right now. As Paul said to Timothy. Find into flame the gifts within as we laid hands on you, the gift that was deposited in you, he said, fan into flame. Now I charge you to fan into flame, for you have so much within you that has not been tapped, that has not been used. Now activate it. Now fan it into flame. In the name of Jesus. Rabba Sekerianda Bori Mahanda. Rosa Kaluri Mahanda. Rana Mori Basanda. We activate the power within. We activate the giftings within. We fan into flame the fire within by the power of the Holy Spirit. We release it now. The worship team, please take your place. We release it right now. That wherever you are, you will be effective in the name of Jesus Christ. Just as the apostles, nothing could intimidate them. They were so much on fire that when they went out, the Bible said God was with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. I release that anointing right now within. And I say, out of your belly will flow rivers, rivers of the living water. Wherever you go, there will be healing. There will be deliverance. There will be salvation. Wherever that water goes, ah, it will bring healing. It will bring deliverance. It will bring salvation. Ah, it will turn situations around in the name of Jesus. Rakatori basike treboshe de bori bahanda, rapa pa 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 basike riara bahanda luri bahanda, ora basaka lianda bori basike treboshe de bori bahanda, rapa pa 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 basike riara balaita, rapa pa 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 stir up, stir up the fountains within, stir up. There are on top wells. There is such wells within you, wells that needs to be unblocked, wells that need to be stir up, fountains of the deeps. That need to be stirred up in the name of Jesus.
breath of 